say yes, Lord, yes, yes to, to your will and to your way. way. Sing it. I, I say yes, yes Lord, Lord, yes. yes. I trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll be. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. It's fast, it's fast. I said yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I will be. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. One more time, come on. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I will be. And my hands will be yes, Lord, yes. Well, that song goes, it goes a little bit faster, but that's okay. Listen, amen, amen. praise good. the Lord, praise it's the Lord. We're going to pass the service back over to our brother Ron. And then we usually do a lot more, but this morning we're not going to do that this morning. We're going to pass it over to your brother so we can get the meat of the word. Amen. God bless y'all. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we, we are so excited and uh, just really looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, working with the ministry doing our corporate environment. I mean, obviously, you know, Hard Drive Ministries doesn't get where it is uh, without the faithful sisters who's you know, pretty much been on, on point from day one. And um, um, from day one. And so the main thing we wanted to just do today was to really rehash and kind of go where it all started from. And when we really began uh, years ago in that barbershop, the Sister Jackie, so vividly remembers, which I had to struggle with, you know, 18, 19 years. But one of the things that um, we really uh, thought that was so unique about this ministry is like Jackie, uh, Sister Jackie posted up the humble beginnings. And when we talk about humble beginnings, we think about obviously first century Christianity and just how intimate uh, that group was. And everything uh, during that time was uh, people getting together, people working together for the, for the cause of the gospel. Uh, I like what the scripture says. It says they all shared everything that they had so that there was no lack uh, amongst the brethren or the sisters. How powerful would that be today if, if brothers and sisters in Christ really truly took that, uh, that mindset? So today, without further ado, we kind of wanted to get back into the basics of ministry. Uh, you guys obviously know we've seen so many things out there so many ways that people uh, uh, bring ministry, but unfortunately there is only one way to do it. And uh, as long as we're doing it according to sacred scripture, according to God's intended plans, then we're fine. Uh, it's only when we get into the deviation and you know try to add and bring more things in there and kind of confuse and complicate situations, which is what we hope today uh, to clarify. So we're going to kind of touch on a lot of different topics about effective ministry. Um, today, we'll open up with uh, with Minister Cal. He'll kind of go into some of those basics. So without further ado, um, floor is yours, uh, Bishop. Uh, amen. Amen. Um, first, I'd like to say that um, when Paul addressed the church, he addressed him as brethren. But when he addressed him as brethren, He's talking to the men and the women, not just the brothers. Um, we are all brethren on his phone, whether you're a man, you're a woman. He speaks. It's a corporate statement. It's not just, you know, some I was talking to somebody years ago and they said, you know, the Bible seems very male chauvinistic. I said, no, you know, God has this different roles. And when we say ministry, we want to talk about the roles or the offices of men and women in ministry, because it's not the same thing. Like we live in a society today where, you know, they try to make, you know, men and women on, put them on a, in the same 
on the same level. Like, you know, anything a man could do, a woman could do, anything a woman could do, a man could do. But in God and Christ, it's different. You know, it's a little different. And God made women uniquely different from us. Like how women are supposed to approach God is not how men approach God. God don't want, me and Mike spoke about that. Um, I'm going to let him go. I don't want to go into what he's going to share. But God wants women to approach God differently. The way he created y'all intrinsically is very different from us. I mean, it's 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 very similar, but it's very uniquely different. And what happens is we have to learn those unique roles in ministry. We got, you know, men who want to be, you know, who want to be behind. Like I know a, a, a prominent teacher, you know, she's the pastor and her husband is under her. And I, didn't, I don't understand that. He's in the background. She's in the forefront. And certain things, the way it goes, is not how God intended it to be. Uh, God is a God of order. So we're going to get into that order right now. Uh, one thing I wanted to start off before we get into it in depth is, you know, being led uh, by your own moral compass and being led by the spirit of God is two different things. I'm going to say this again. Being led by your own moral compass and being led by the spirit of God is two different things. When I first um, got saved, I'll just give you a quick testimony. My whole concept of Christianity and what it means to be a Christian was moral. Like, if I just do the right thing, I've said this before, everything will go right. Like, that's all God wants from me to stop drinking, to stop cursing, stop smoking, stop, 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 stop. And that makes me right in his sight. And I had the wrong attitude and the wrong concept towards his grace. Because in some way, I thought I had to participate in that somehow, right? Not understanding what God did for me. We talked about it last week and the week before all Christ did for us on the cross when we spoke about the last seven words. And even the follow week, we reiterated all that Christ accomplished for us on the cross and why he did it. But my point is, is that I kind of got caught up in my own morality, so to speak. See, there's a difference in being led again by your own moral compass, like most of us Christians do, and being led by the Spirit of God. See, your moral compass could steer you away from God's direction. When you think you're doing the right thing and it's all about you and what you're doing, you'll kind of get away from what God is doing. Right? When you're led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will lead us into some hard places. Right? It led Moses into the wilderness for 40 years. He went through a lot of problems in there. Right? It led them three Hebrew Hebrew boys into uh, 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 the furnace. Right? Remember? It led Daniel into the lion's den. Right? It led um, um, uh, David into the valley of the shadow of death. His life was constantly on the, on the line. Right? It's not, the spirit ain't going to always lead us into comfortable places as men or women, right? It's not always going to make us feel good. Our lives ain't always going to be like, you know, one hat, big happy festival. Or, you know, we just going to, you know, if I serve God and I be good, everything's going to go good and I'm a, everything's going to be right. The spirit of God will lead us into some hard places. It let David on the run. David was on the run. We get ready to get into Samuel for 15 years for something he didn't do. He was a good brother. He went through hell. <laughs> First 15 years of his ministry. I know he was sitting around like, what did I do? He did absolutely nothing. So being led by the spirit of God and again, being led by your own moral compass is two different things. The Bible says, um, Ron, help me out. Romans 8, 14. Let's read that real quick. Amen. Romans 8, 14? Yes. Amen. Romans 8, 14. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay, you can stop there, right? It says, so many are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God, meaning it has nothing to do with your own morality and what you're not doing and what you think you're doing. You have to be led. In order to be led by the spirit of God, 
You got to make sure that you're in the right doctrine to make sure you have the right gospel, to mm. make sure you're following the right Jesus. Because if not, then you're being led by your own self. You're leading yourself, right? So the only way you could become an authentic son of God or even a woman of God, daughter of God rather, is to be led by his spirit. And I'm going to say this again. A lot of times the spirit takes us to places we do not want to go. That's mm. something we got to remember. We got to remember it, right? Something I said here. One thing you got to understand, right? Understanding the gospel is very pivotal to everything. Mm -hmm. Understanding first that we're saved by grace, right? Through faith. If it's not grace through faith, then we're doomed. If we're not saved by grace through faith, then we're, we're lost, right? That's something we all know, right? Also, Satan's job is to get us to frustrate that grace by making us think, now you got to catch this, that our good works makes God happy. Mm. It doesn't, right? The Bible says that the works that we do, God before ordained that we will do them even before we was born. He knew what we do. We can't even take credit for it. He already designed that. We'll do the little things. We'll preach the gospel to this one. We'll preach the gospel to that one. We'll do this. We'll do that. He already designed that. We can't even take credit for the works that we do. Right? This is what Paul said. Right? Amen. And this was a problem. And Jackie touched on this, and I want to touch and go on this last week. She touched on the Cain syndrome. And when we look at Cain and Abel, Cain was a murderer. But look how Cain started. He was a hardworking, religious man. Right? He was, an, you know, a hardworking man. And he brought the fruit from the ground he worked on. And God said, I don't want that. Why did God reject Cain's offering? One, because Cain brought cursed works to God. From the curse, the works, the ground was cursed and his hands was cursed. And he tried to offer that to God where, where Abel put his trust in the lamb. He offered the lamb what God wanted. And Cain said, I don't want to do that. So, so who does Cain represent? I don't want to get all, go off here, but Cain represents every major world re religion that rejects the land mm. and institute their own works and offer God the cursed works that they try to offer God. You can't offer God no works. The only works that Christ, ex that God accepts, the fathers, what his son did on the cross for us, that's the only thing he looks at. So the point is, if you ain't got Jesus, I want to start off by saying that you got nothing. I don't care how good you're doing, how good you're not doing, and what you think you're doing. If you ain't got Jesus, you got nothing. If you ain't got the right Jesus, because Paul said there's counterfeit Jesus out there. Satan counterfeiting Jesus all over the place. A lot of these ministries we go to, we think they're preaching the gospel. They're not. This is why we started this ministry. Because if you ain't got the right Jesus... And Satan gets you to focus on your own morality or your own moral compass and getting yourself together. I've seen a lot of people who don't fear the Lord clean their lives up and get yourself together and think, get you focused on that and thinking that this is what this is about. He got you. We have to understand that it's only through Jesus. That's the one thing. All of this that we're doing, everything that we're saying is only through him. Without him, I'm going to say this again, guys. We got nothing. Okay? Amen. 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 Okay, we're gonna um we're gonna break this down. Me and brother Mike gonna do the best we can. What are the roles of men and women in ministry? This is important because a lot of people ain't walking in their role or their office. You got men and women office, women and men. It's not going right. God is a God of order. God does things a certain way. We get again, we get ready to read the book of Samuel, and I'm gonna glean something out of there. When um just to just show you how how meticulous God is about his order. Um David um had they had got the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of, Ark of the Covenant represented God's presence among the children of Israel, and he had went and got it. When he became king, that's the first thing he wanted to do. He said, they said, what you want to do, David? He said, go get the Ark of the Covenant. So he go, they go get it. And it was in one of the priest's house and they put it on a brand new cart and everything. And they carried that cart. And, you know, while they was carrying that cart, that the cart was carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And it, it sh the, the cart shook and the Ark of the Covenant was getting ready to fall. And 
uh, I forget his name, one of David's close friends went and grabbed the ark from hitting the ground. He touched the ark and he died mm. immediately. And they was they was blown away. They was like, what's, what's going on? And they said it was a big revival in Israel. They was dancing. They were see, singing. You know, David was on the run for 15 years. Then another, I think, 20 years before he came king, he finally became the king. And it took a long time. And he wanted, and it was a big celebration in Israel. They was singing, they was dancing, they was marching, they was doing everything. And when the ark went to fall, hit the ground, stump, you know, the uh, cart stumbled when the ark was going to fall. Or Halahu, I forget that's his name, and he grabbed it to keep it, and he dropped dead on the spot. And they all was like, "Stop!" Everybody froze, like, "What? What happened?" Uh, Uzzah. And David went Uzzah. back to the word, huh? Uzzah, U Z Z A H. I'm sorry. Uzzah, right. David went back to the to the word of God and said, wait a minute, we're doing it wrong. None, none should touch the ark but the Levites, Aaron's sons. There's rings in the side of the ark. Y'all got to put staffs in the ark. And you have both of them on both sides. They have to sanctify themselves and carry that on his shoulder, on their shoulders. He said, he said, we got in trouble because we didn't worship God after the due order. See, God is a God of order. He wasn't worrying about the singing and the dancing and none of that stuff. Even the, sincere, the sincerity of Uzzah to keep the ark from falling, he didn't care about that neither. See, we got to make sure that we are in order with the order that God designed and the way he wants us to do things. We can't just do things the way we want to do it. I know that. Right? All of us on here are sinful men. We fail daily, but still God says, I ain't worried about that. Do it the way I want it done. I know y'all got their shortcomings. That's why I sent my son. But I still want things done a certain way. Right? And that's what we're going to go over now. Right? What are the roles or the offices, either one of men and women, in ministry? We're going to start at Galatians 3.26. Brother Mike, you can help me with that. Amen, amen. Okay, guys, we're going to go to Galatians 3.26. Wait one second. All right, and it says, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. 27 says, I'm sorry, you said, third, um, second right, Read it to 28, 28, keep going. Okay. Uh, Galatians three, chapter, Galatians chapter three, verse twenty-seven says, "For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, union and communion with Christ, the Anointed One, have put on yourself Christ. There is now no distinction between Jew nor Greek. There is slave nor free. There is not male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus." You can stop right there, right? Now he said, "In Christ Jesus, there's no distinction." Right? You are one. Right? There's no one better. I want to focus on that word better. The man is never better than the woman or none of that. I always tell Mike, we have a joke in the ministry. They said when they came and took Jesus, the woman stayed there and the men ran. They checked. The women ain't go nowhere. So it don't mean that the men are more the reason why God does things. It has nothing to do. The men is not of a higher quality than that of the women. It's just different roles, guys. Just different functions. The way God does things. Right? Um, now, um, there's an administrative order in, in heaven and there's an administrative. Now focus on the word administrative guys, administrative order on earth, the way God does things. He has one It says God, Christ is not the head of the father. The father's the head of Christ, right? The Holy Spirit don't send the son. The father and the son sends the Holy Spirit. There's an administrative, not a, not not like a higher quality of father is not a higher quality than the son or better than the son, but there's still an admittive. They're one, but there's an administrative order in heaven and there's an administrative order in earth. Uh, praise. Are you there, baby? Go to first Corinthians 11, three. Ah, all right. Give me a second. Three. Okay. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man and the head of Christ is God. You, you can stop it. Okay. No, that's it. I'm just trying to give you the order when it says head. Again, that's administrative. Okay. Men are not better than women. We're one in Christ Jesus, but there's different offices within the fellowship. Women have a role. Men have a role. One is not better than the other. I'm going to keep saying that until it gets on your nerves. 
Um, I want to say this, right? And me and Brother Mike is, we're going somewhere with this. So you try to understand what we're saying, right? Um, I said this already, I wrote it down, but the father is not better than the son, so as the man is not better than the woman, right? Nevertheless, our administrator's offices has nothing to do with us being of a higher quality, right? Again, it goes back to God is a God of order, of order. He has an order, right? Now, it said, I, I wrote this, uh, Brother Mike, as Brother Mike will illustrate, I don't want to go over what he's going to say, right? That we believe that marriage is the gateway, right? To men and women understanding, right? Authentic leadership in the church. Like marriage, if you see what Paul did, anytime Paul spoke about leadership roles, he always used marriage to make it his point, right? When he spoke about the man, he said, love Christ like like, you know, love your wives like Christ loves the church, right? He says, um, you know, any even when he spoke, we get ready to go to uh, Titus, Brother Ron, Titus 1.6, right? He always uses marriage to bring out a point as far as roles in ministry. There's a reason why he does that. I kind of understand, you know, um, but he brings this out through illustrated constantly through marriage, what marriage represents. It's a focal point of understanding what real leadership is. Um, yeah. Ron, you there? If anyone be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of rioting or being unruly. Titus 1.6. Right, he's talking about qualities for leadership. He said, if anybody be blameless, the husband of one wife, um, having his house in order. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I failed at this scripture miserably. And my kids are on the front one, right? And it's sad. You know, I just, I purposed in my heart to do with this scripture, but this is not easy. See, anybody, you know, you'll read that scripture and be like, okay, I'm just going to get married and have my kids in line. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. And it's all going to go great. I'm going to be God's man, but it's, God said, if you could get past this, you ready to be over my church. You ready to be in leadership if you could pass this test right here, the marriage test, right? Mm -hmm. I had to step back from leadership. This is why I just called myself Brother Calvin. They called me Bishop. All of them called me that out of. Deacon started calling me that when I was 27 years old. He's on the phone, right? But I'm not, you know, a bishop. I'm Brother Calvin because I failed miserably at this office. You know, I know a big time bishop in Brooklyn over a lot of different uh, fellowships uh, and uh, he's never been married. <clears throat> I said, when they told me that, I said, what? He just ignores this scripture right here. You know, a lot of people ignore the scripture and it doesn't say wives be the husband of one husband. It's, I mean, wives, you know, be married to, you know, the wives of one husband. It's saying husbands be the husband of one wife. Now, this is talking about the elders and the bishop. And you'll see elder and bishop in the New Testament. Both of them are pastors. It's, it's synonymous. But my point is, is that, you know, I know this big time guy. And again, he has a lot of followers. We get ready to go into that. That's the next segment. And he's not even married. He's never been married. He skipped past his verse here. See, he said, Paul said, if you... You know, if you're ready, if you if you can handle this right here, you're ready to be in leadership. If you can't, you just got to just serve on a certain capacity, you know. Now, even here, it seems like I'm running the show here, but I'm not. You know, I'm Ron and Brother Mike, basically, is in those offices, but Brother Cal is kind of under that. Now, I knew the word, and I basically brought the concept of the ministry to these brothers, but, you know, I had to fall back. Right. And that's what I try to tell people. Right. Because of these scriptures, they convict me. You know, he said, if you're ready then you're really ready to run the ministry. And again, we always use marriage. He constantly uses marriage as that gateway. Um, One more <laughs> scripture that I'm going to pass it to Mike. Mike. Um, Second yeah. Timothy three, first five through eight. I said, um, how and why? godly woman should earnestly desire to marry 
spiritually connected godly men who will spiritually protect them from false teachers, right? And I'm going to say this. Why do I keep saying spiritually connected? You know, a lot of people are not connected. You know, a lot of these men that say they're Christians and even a lot of these women, they're really not connected, right? And sometimes we get together and we make these decisions and we don't realize that sometimes Satan plays us and he connects us to somebody that's not connected and he undermines our walk with Christ big time. Because when, you know, when your relationship of marriage fails, you get devastated. It devastates you. It rocks you. And you be feeling like Satan be like, you might as well give up. You failed, buddy. So go on back and live your life. He wants you to give up. Mm -hmm. But you got to make sure that the people that you want to marry, especially women, are spiritually not perfect. And you're going to find no perfect man now. Mm -hmm. These men going to need a lot of work, but you got to make sure he's connected. Amen. He has to be connected in order to spiritually protect you from all that false doctrine and them false teachings that Satan has going on out here all over the place. That real man of God should give you a teaching or, a, 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 you know, build a wall around you spiritually where that where if nothing else, you don't get duped by that stuff because that stuff will destroy you. Mm -hmm. It will destroy you. Okay, come on, Mike. Let's go. Okay, we are Second Timothy. First Timothy, I believe. Three. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Okay. Yeah. Three, yeah. five, three. Three, chapter five. Three. Yeah. All right. Chapter three, verse five through eight. Second Timothy, three, chapter three, verse five reads: For though they hold a form of piety, they deny and reject and are strangers of the power of their conduct, belief. And genuineness of their profession. Avoid such people, turn away from them. Verse six says, For among yeah. them are Yeah, keep reading, brother. Yeah, verse verse six, second Timothy chapter three, verse six says, For among them there are those who worm their way into homes and captive, silly and weak natured and spiritual dwarf women, loaded down with burdens of their sins, swayed and led away by various evil desires and seductive impulses. Verse 7 says, these weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. They are forever inquiring and getting information, but are never able to arrive at the recognition and knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. I want you to stop there, brother. Wow. Now, let me That's tell beautiful. you something, what I've learned through this. Um, Mike, you're going to finish that 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 next chat verse. But what I've learned through this chapter is that if you look at a lot of these false teachers, I'm being real with y'all now. Most of these false teachers that are filthy, rich and running around here doing what they're doing. 75% of their parishioners are women. And they don't only support them with their patronage, they support them with their finances. Women give more than men. They give. When they emotional G-spots get hit by some of these, because these some of these guys will say things that will really be like, wow, okay. You know, they'll touch on certain things. We always say this in this ministry. A lot of these teachings out here, because it touches on your moral failures, a lot of these guys, they make millions off of your moral failures. They'll teach the word in such a way we'll hit that thing that you're struggling with. Somebody in there is committing fornication. Somebody in there is lying. Somebody's suffering with homosexuality. Somebody is stealing. So somebody in there is doing it mm -hmm. and they use your moral failures to make themselves filthy rich mm -hmm. right and some of these women when it hits them they throw their money up in the air like it's confetti <laughs> and they and they support these false teachers and they don't even realize it. this is why you need that spiritual protection this is why you need a ministry that teaches sound doctrine to keep you because god is going to hold you accountable for 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 supporting Financially and spiritually, these ministries that are teach that are teaching detrimental doctrine and destroying people. This is why this is essential to have more than anything else to have the right doctrine. Right? I want to read something to you about this segment here before I pass it to Mike. It says these false religious leaders take advantage, right, of the problems people have and promise quick and easy solutions. They worm their way in and soon control people's lives, right? It is not It is not long before these leaders grab their followers' loyalty, money, and service. 
and their converse are worse off than they were from before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's this, these type of guys, right? So they worm their way into these, right? It also says here, right? It says, I like another one I read. It says, uh, these are they who are well with sins and sway by all kinds of evil desires, right? Such women become an easy prey for false teachers. Suggest that these women want to pose as learned people, right? But actually, they remain ignorant of the truth. Thought mm -hmm. that was powerful, too. Right, mm -hmm. but he uses something here, a word here. I looked up. Let me see this. I thought it was uh something powerful he uses here. Let's see if I can find it. He uses the word lust, right? He uses two words here I want to touch on. Divers lust in the King James. It says they these women have divers lust lust. When it says divers lust that means something with many colors something manifold something it doesn't mean when we hear lust automatically we think of you know sexual immorality or something sexual no 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 we lust after all type of things see satan's main job is to get you to try to obey your lust too right and it doesn't have to be lusting after you know a man or a woman we lust after all type of things we lust after money we lust after fame we lust after you know financial security we lust after houses we lust after cars i could go on and on and on we lust after all type of things right and we lust after things right that has absolutely nothing to do with what god is doing in you and through you that's the problem it has nothing to do with it, but we'll lust after it. And when we hear men that tell us how to, we want to know what can we do to obtain these things and make ourselves happy in this life, in this world. And when certain men start teaching that way and telling us how we can get it, uh, six keys to that, seven, you know, keys, they start talking about. And if you do this and if you want to be blessed and you want to have disco, you have to do this. You got to stop this. And they tell you all these different formulas that ain't got nothing to do with what God is telling you and where God is leading you, right? Preparing you for ministry, understanding ministry, and how God wants to use you. And we get caught up with these type of preachers, constantly, constantly, right? And I want y'all to understand that, right? Like ministry is very like how God wants to use us and what God is doing in us, is, that's everything. Where God wants to plan us, like some people, everybody can't be in a big house with 10 cars. Everybody can't. God needs people everywhere. He needs people in the projects to stay there and minister to those people. He needs people in all walks of life, all different places. He sends people. I remember I met a brother and a brother was, was telling me, he said, I said, what you doing, brother? He said, I'm doing, you know, missionary. I said, he said, I said, wait, and this is when Afghanistan was going crazy. He said, I'm going to Afghanistan. And I believe it's fruit over there, brother. I'm going to head over there. I said, wow. Right. So my point is, is that ministry is not, you know, you listen, you you hear these type of preachers, these itching their preachers. They tell you, you know, try to give you comfortability on earth. And that's what we're looking for. And we serve God with that attitude. We'll miss it completely, completely. With that, I'm going to stop there because I can go on. Brother Mike, I'm pass it to you. Amen. Amen, brother. You had to stop, brother. I'm, I'm blessed, brother. Going in like that. Amen. It's powerful, brother. It's powerful. I love the way you um. Broke that down. Uh, uh, but hold on, Mike. One last thing I want to say. You hear me? Yeah, brother. Go ahead. Read verse 8. I want to show you. Verse 8, they say something. I meant to. I left it out. I'm going to close with verse 8. Okay, now, just as Janice and Jan Breeze were hostile to and resisted Moses, so these men are also hostile to and oppose the truth. They have the praise. Right Okay. Right, right there. They were hostile. These men opposed the truth for their own self, you know, advancement and self, you know, like, you know, their own security, financial security. Right. But my point is, is this. Does any not not Mike and Ron. Does anybody know who Janice and Jan Breeze is? Anybody could jump in on this. Anybody have any idea who these two men that Paul used to make a point? Janice, Jan Breeze. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. 
Ain't Janice and Jan Breeze, weren't they like um they weren't even like they weren't they weren't believers. No, right? No. They, start, they started a counterfeit religion. Yeah. That's right. You know where they come from, who they are. I forgot, but I know, yeah. I know that they started a counterfeit religion. Mm-hmm. I, I forgot. You I forgot. Okay. Okay. That's that's right it hey, it's okay. Janice, because it doesn't say their name in the Old Testament. This is why you don't. Janice and Jan Breeze. Remember when Moses came and he threw the snake on the ground and yes. they threw the snake? Yes. That's yes. Janice and Jan yes. Breeze. They, yes. they duplicated what Moses was doing, Thank right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And they had a certain amount of power to do it, too. They couldn't stand before Moses no more. God got tired of them. You know, Satan got a little power, too, now. Amen. Some Amen. of these men got a little power behind what they do. They might tell you something, it might happen. They might share something. You might be like, wow. They have a little power, but it's a false power. It's not It's not from God. And he, he used these two to make that point. He said, Janese and Jan Breeze. Janese and Jan Breeze is the people that Moses went against. When he went against Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, let my people go. And his magicians, magicians came out and started duplicating a little bit what Moses was doing. That's them two he was talking about. He said, these are the type of men you were up against. With that mindset, mm -hmm. right? They're counterfeiters, they're duplicators, but they're not genuine. They don't want the truth at all. They're in it for themselves and themselves only. Self-preservation. That's all I wanted to say, Mike. Mm -hmm. Can I can I make a comment about yeah. what you said earlier? I just wanted to comment about um what you said. Um, you you gave the scripture, um, Romans 8, 14, as many as led by the spirit, right? They are the sons of God. But um, you also mentioned here about women being led away and that's very true i just wanted to give my own testimony about that really quickly about um being led you have to be led by the spirit of god because i remember going to many fellowships you know genuinely looking for god looking for christ you know because there's so many different movements out there but um i just wanted to say on behalf of women because i'm a woman at the end of the day um there's a lot of smooth talkers out there and there's a lot of those fellowships out there that are, um, they are laying down with a bunch of women. And I noticed I was in many of them myself. So I wanted to get that testimony about that fact being true, being very true, but you don't really, you don't really know until you actually listen to that voice of God and got to be led out of those places. Because at the end of the day, you will be donating and giving your money to, you know, these false pre preachers and teachers and they're charismatic speakers and they're powerful. You think that they're powerful are uh, men of God, but God, you know, let you know, mm -mm, this is not the gospel and this is the wrong Jesus. So I just wanted to comment on that, that you hit, you know, the head, you know, praise God um, um, on it, you know, you hit the nail on the head with that one, especially about, you know, women, you know, and uh, I just wanted to share that, you know, that's all I have to say. Amen. And I forgot, uh, one last thing, Mike, I'm sorry, where's your wife, Janelle? Almost. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sister. She, Sister Janelle, me and you talked about this. You there? Yes. Um, um, I touched on being, why is it trivial to be spiritually connected to somebody that's connected? And I, I, I uh, and I told you, I wanted to, you to share your testimony Remember yesterday of being on both sides and yes. to say, okay, sister, I'm passing it to you. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, well, good morning, everybody. I think, um, you know, it's really important, um, as just sharing my testimony, like being connected to someone who is a man of God and being able to decipher that as women. Um, sometimes we get caught up. I know I have gotten caught up um, in the charisma and the words and just the look of things and the finances or what can I do? How can I fix all of those things? And that's not where God wants you to place your, um, your focus. He wants you to make sure that it's on um, can this man, can you be led by this man of God um, through the word? Does he know his Bible? Can he grow you and teach you in the word? Mm -hmm. And um, is there fruit that would come, that would come from both of you as a result of you growing spiritually in the word? And mm -hmm. in my own testimony, you know, I was with a man for 10 years that was not, um, uh, I was married with a man for 10, for three years, but I was with him for 10 um, a man that was not of God, and at the time I thought he was because we went to a we went to a name it and claim it ministry, and everything sounded really charismatic. And my ex husband was a charismatic man as well, and um, he went up to the altar. He did all of those things, 
but his his lifestyle and him really understanding the word those things he could not do and he indulged in sin and he did not grow me spiritually and it, we were in spiritual disobedience and there were things that that came up just about like being interested in islam and and him being interested in Islam and me, you know, I'm a Christian woman. And I was like, this does not line up with the word of God at all. But um, when I ended up getting with Mike, um, you know, I knew instantly when we met, uh, when he started talking about the things of God and he was, we were reading the same scriptures um, mm -hmm. and we were having, you know, strong conversations about it. And he prayed, you know, I think that's another thing as women, you know, sometimes you get caught the difference is like when you're with somebody that's not a man of God, you can get caught into conflicts or disagreements with that man. And um, it could feel like a never ending cycle of trauma on how to get out. Mm -hmm. um, so you cry and you argue and you cry and you probably do other things. And, and what a man of God, what you do is that man prays for you. He opens up in prayer, there's scripture there. He's leading you uh, by the word and every decision that you make, he asks you to you know lean on Christ. What a man of well, someone is not a man of God, they don't do that. Um, you know, it's I blame you. It's um, you know, we make up, but it's never really making up. It's temporary. It's a false sense of of making up because the things just come back, come back around. So I just wanted to share that testimony of like, you know, the difference between the two. Um, someone that's not a man of God and someone that is. Um, I thank God that I'm with someone that is a man of God who's been leading me, who's been growing me. Uh, my life has completely turned around from where I was and how I was living. And I could not be led by somebody who did not love God, who did not know God. Um, and I, I could only understand that when I separated the separate, when God divinely separated the two of us and allowed me to get into his word, allowed me to move away from um any uh worldly things that would try to pull me away from the word and when i got into his word and and spent time with him that god blessed me with with mike i didn't think it was gonna happen for me um and and we as women have to have to know like um what a true man of god is and what he is, should be doing when you marry him in that gateway that marriage is a gateway for for amazing things to happen so that's all i wanted to say mm, mm, mm. outstanding outstanding powerful point powerful hard drive ministries okay this song is dedicated to everybody out there chasing that cake especially the people in the church the gospel is supposed to be given out for free preach for free taught for free but we put a heavy tax on it so what we trying to do is just challenge all those out there that's preaching and teaching and doing what they doing for money Everybody scraping up them dead presidents with the pictures facing up In God we trust is what is conveyed to us I guess God is the money that they pay to us I know it's hard cause the money spins the world around I get dizzy thinking all the Christians that I found Believe in God for the things he can do for them Reducing faith to what it can bring to them David said I was young and now I'm old Never seen the righteous begging out in the cold Forty years in the desert shoes never got old It's sad cause these things Christians already know Go to church for the word and get a show Four on court and beg for your dough This is why the world takes the church as a joke Out there begging like our God is broke Dollar 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 Chase that dollar scrape that dollar Be sure you don't take that dollar Make that dollar 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 bill y'all Dollar bill y'all makes me wanna holler just how I feel y'all Hey yo sugar pop check out this second verse Cream rules everything around me, astounding Even the Christian church that found me, I'm challenging Each and any one who wanna down me About exposing all these things and wanna clown me Cause when Christ brings conviction it burns Even if you don't wanna listen it yearns Can't shake it till you speak it And people learn about the love of money where he's most concerned Everybody sitting around trying to wait their turn To make it big and second Peter says it's all gonna burn Financial stability is not a quality of life Especially what you seek is not Ain't good in Christ, yeah, Christian. I know you're trying to pay your bills, but I still gotta tell you all how I 
feel You should never be induced by the dollar Seduced by the dollar Bamboozed by the dollar Used by the By the dollar 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 Chase that dollar Scrape that dollar Be sure you don't take that dollar Make that dollar 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 bill y'all Dollar bill y'all Makes me wanna holler just how I feel y'all Hey yo sugar pop I'm tired of this old testament tempest and stuff They preach out of each and every dollar Give a dime in the week give it up or face the crimes Like most Christians in my word I spend a lot of time Like on the track I watch the subject running through my mind So how much should we give? 200% because if he got your heart he'll control what you spend You can slice it how you want it you can never get 10 Though true in the old is how it was back then But now in this dispensation is where I live With no grudges in my heart is where I give Dollar 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 Chase that dollar scrape that dollar Be sure you don't take that dollar Make that dollar 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 bill y'all Dollar bill, y'all, makes me wanna holler just how I feel, y'all.